Hi, I'm Micah Clark with the American Family Association of India. Appreciate you joining us today. I want to talk about something that happened at the State House this week. You know, a lot of times I just simply run through a list of bills, tell you about the bills. I want to kind of give you a, I guess, a picture of what it's like at the State House sometimes when we're standing for your values. As you may know, House Bill 1608 was heard in the Senate Education Committee on Wednesday. That bill says that teachers cannot talk about human sexuality in K through three. Now they add pre-K to it also, which I think is a good move. <clears throat> but basic says you cannot talk to young children about gender identity, homosexuality, human sexuality, anything like that. It's not age appropriate. We don't even teach sex education as a matter of basic biology and science until sixth grade in most schools. I would like to have seen this moved up through fifth grade, but it is a good bill and step forward. But I went and testified on this bill on Wednesday. I got there about one o'clock hearing was one thirty, and uh, there were there's only fifty seats in the Senate chamber where the hearing was held, so the seats fell filled up pretty quickly. I was on the last row. Fortunately, I was thankful I got a seat, but it was full of homosexual activists, liberal ministers, uh, school people, um, just activists, and, and then there was probably seventy five to a hundred of them outside the chamber in the hallway yelling and screaming and chanting and doing things like that making a lot of noise when they didn't like what who was speaking but there were actually only two people who supported this bill which was unfortunate because there were probably 40 people who testified uh, against the bill uh, even though i think legislators understand polling shows this is a 70 percent issue people do not want kids talk to about these issues you know in the in the NAEP scores which is our national association of education progress test that we give to students 60 percent of kids in indiana if I, in third grade are not proficient in reading or math teachers have a lot better things to do than to talk to kids about sexuality issues when they're five and six years old so i testified i, I think i gave a pretty reasonable testimony i try not to poke the bear i simply try to persuade legislators knowing who my audience is and in fact on wednesday i'm actually think i'm going to share my testimony so you can see what i said which is something i don't do very often in my weekly email but i want to know that i want you to know hopefully that i'm representing you well what i'm saying about your values and so you can see the testimony that i said and, and judge for yourself it was if it was provocative or not the reason i mentioned that is i was last one to next to last one to testify I walked out of the Senate chambers. There's that throng of, of people there, disruptive people. As I walked out of the doors, some guy yelled, Hey, Micah, F you, but he said it. And then the whole crowd chanted, F you, F you, F you. I turned to one of the state police officers standing there and I said, I guess that's the voice of tolerance for you. You know, these are the people who claim to be loving of tolerance, diversity, compassionate, but mention one thing they don't like. If you don't agree with them, they go ballistic. And it was it was intimidating. I mean, I smiled and I waved and, and said thank you to the crowd because it was kind of humorous to me. Actually, I went downstairs, left the state house. I saw a state representative who was a friend and I told him what happened. He said, well, are you the one? He said, I heard them chanting that from upstairs. He said, that's just unbelievable. It's unfortunate. It shows the coarseness of our culture it shows how our culture is degraded you know we, we can't talk about things you know the apostle paul says come let us reason together we can't do that anymore but we have to stand for what's right and i thought you'd find that interesting last time when i testified on this last month in the house i had people of that same crowd follow me out in the parking lot as i was walking across the parking lot they were behind me about 10 15 yards chanting we say gay, we say gay. Uh, it was it was juvenile. It was like second grade humor. Again, the Lord made me smile at that. I thought it was humorous, but it, it is kind of sad as well to know what we're up against. The mentality of, of a lot of indoctrinated young people, a lot of people following their own God. And, and it's just sad that we've broken down to that kind of uh discussion if it's if you could call it that but it's important still that you support house bill 1608 to protect young people 
protect the innocence of young children in our society and in our schools today. That bill passed out of committee nine to five on a party line vote. On Monday, they will, they will adopt the committee report. On um, Tuesday or Wednesday, they will take second reading floor amendments. They may then vote on it Thursday, but probably my guess would be the following week. And hopefully that bill will pass the Senate. And uh, But what I do know that's going to pass quickly that I want to tell you about is another bill we've been following. That bill's in the House. It's Senate Bill 480. Senate Bill 480 also protects the innocence and protects the health of young people. It says that a doctor cannot prescribe puberty-blocking drugs, dangerous, risky hormones, high levels of hormones, and in fact, even some drugs that we were once used to castrate sex offenders are being given to young children to block their puberty, to mask their gender. And it also says that you cannot perform a sex reassignment, gender reassignment surgery on a child under 18. If they want to do that, let them decide that as an adult when their brains are more fully developed. A lot of kids go through puberty. They change. They, 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 they then um, uh, revert or they then uh, uh, identify with their true sexual orientation, sexual gender as they were born with their true biology. So I think it's good for kids to wait on this. You know, we don't let kids drive, even if their parents think they should drive at age 12. We don't let kids uh, use alcohol until they're 21, even if their parents think it's okay at 17 or 18. That's just the law, and I think this is a good public law. The Senate Bill 480 would protect minor children from these experimental and dangerous surgeries. Uh, and that should pass on Monday. That's passed the amendment stage on the House floor. I think they will vote on that Monday. I think we'll get over 65, around 65, 66, maybe 67 votes in support of that. Many states are doing this. In fact, I'll tell you this. This is kind of interesting. It fits with both these bills a little bit. You may have seen this story this week about the composer Beethoven. Beethoven died 100 years ago. So a century ago, a man passes away, famous composer. And people want to know, what did Beethoven die of? Because there's a lot of controversy. Uh, what, what caused him? We know he had deafness issues. But it was interesting when I read that story on Fox News. Scientists took a strand of hair that was allegedly that belonged to him with, I think, a letter of his and a lock of hair about this long. And they determined what had happened to him as far as his death. He died from hepatitis. But what's interesting is in the story you'll read, some of the strands of hair that were attributed to him were not his. They belonged to a woman. So 100 years later, even a little tweak uh, thing of hair can tell a scientist this person who died a century ago, that piece of hair that we consider almost insignificant can, says right down to its core, this was a man or this was a woman. You know, that's not something you can change. It goes to every cell of our body. It goes down to our bone structure. You know, this is, this is, it, it is a joke to say this is gender affirming care. It's not gender affirming care. When you're removing sex organs, when you're giving drugs to kids to block and to mask their true sexual uh, nature and who they truly are, that's not gender affirming, that's gender hiding. These surgeries don't affirm your gender, they mask your gender, they hide your gender, they mutilate your gender. And so to call this gender affirming care is just word games by the left. This is distorting what people really are and, and taking young kids and giving them drugs that are, have all sorts of risk of sterility, other issues. There was a lot of testimony from people who, who, who detransitioned, having thought they were one sex, came back to their original biological sex, and they testified on all the harms that these surgeries and drugs did them to them years afterwards that they went down that that unfortunate path. So I'd encourage you to call your your representative if, if you want to when they vote Monday afternoon on Senate Bill 480. Uh, you can call your House member at 317-232-9600. Uh, and in the Senate, you can call your state senator on House Bill 1608, Protecting the Innocence of Children in School from K-3 at 317-232-9400. I'll have more on this on Wednesday. Update you on what happens in our weekly email. Appreciate you reading those each week. Appreciate you watching this video. 
and I hope you have a great weekend. Again, I'm Micah Clark, American Family Association of Indiana.